What's up, everybody? I'm JP. I'm here at DW in California, and uh, I want to talk to you about tuning. Tuning is hard. Most people think it sucks, and it takes a while to get good at. But I'm going to show you a couple little tips, and I'm also going to I'm going to try to show you how you can experiment, right? Because it's impossible for me to show you a surefire way to guarantee that your drums sound awesome because you might have different dimensions, different heads, different drums. There's a lot of variables. So more importantly than a specific formula that will guarantee a good sound, um, I'm more interested in just talking about like, how do you start experimenting? Like, What is worth trying to make your drum sound good? So without further ado, let's do it. I'm sitting here in front of a PDP concept maple kit with wood hoops and uh, it's a great sounding kit, but not yet it's not. I mean, it's, it's kind of cool. But let's start with one drum at a time, all right? The kick drum. Um, the kick drum, a lot of times what I like to do with the kick drum from my sound is like low, punchy, kind of dead kick drum. So luckily, PDP drums come with a sort of like muffling pillow type thing in there. Um, you can take that out, you can, you can put it in depending on if you want the drum to ring longer. But you have to think about, with all these drums, right, and if, if you've been thinking about drums, tuning drums, playing drums for a long time, this might seem obvious, but a lot of people just haven't paused to think about what is happening when you play the drum. So when I hit the kick drum, you've got two heads. And I'm just pushing air back and forth. And as you know, those air waves is what creates the sound at certain frequencies. So when I hit the kick drum, both heads are going to move like this together. So if you think about that a little bit, right, if we tune one of those heads high enough, it'll, rot it'll uh, vibrate fast enough to make a note that we can hear as a note, like a boom. Um, and if it's so low that it can't vibrate for very long, you'll just, just when you get like the pff, pff, which is great because that's what a lot of people go for, especially in like rock, funk, kind of like heavier types of music. So that's usually what I'm going for on a kick drum like this. So I'll usually have both heads actually pretty low. And by pretty low, what I mean is like I finger tighten them, and then just a, a, a full turn maybe, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less. Again, depending on your drum, that's going to take a little bit of experimenting. Um, but I usually tend to start right about there. So I've, I've just kind of finger tightened this kick drum here. Um, well, I've done a little more than finger tighten, but I'm gonna, here's what it sounds like now. Which is actually totally passable, but I want to lift it up a little bit. It's a little bit too dead for me, so I'm just doing just a, a, about a quarter turn on each of these lugs. And that brings me to a place that not only sounds good to play, but feels good to play. Cool. And the kick drum for me is really one I don't stress about too much because it's like I use some muffling and I just wanted to get that fat, punchy tone. Um, Experiment with the, the resonant head, bring it up, we'll give it a little more tone, bring it down. Um, we'll obviously deaden it a little bit. But what you don't want to hear is it for it to be so loose that it's wrinkly and you hear like a, like if you can imagine the slap of a piece of paper if you were to hit it. If it's too loose, you'll get that kind of sound. And obviously that's not ideal. So that's that. Let's move on to the snare drum now. So snare drum here, I've got the lugs, again, finger tight. Now before I put the rim on, you know, I took a new, I put the old head here, I took a new head, put it on, try to make sure that it's real centered and, and square, put the rim on, line up the lugs, get them finger tight again, so go around, tighten them as much as you can with your fingers, because that gives you an even starting place around the drum. And then, and this is, this is an important piece of the puzzle, so as we tune any drum, I didn't need to do this with a kick drum, um, but what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make a star. So basically I'm going to start here, I'm going to go across diagonally, and then the trick is as long as you've got, well, so it depends, here we've got an eight lug drum, so then I'm going to go diagonal, right, over two, and do these ones. And then I'll do the two in the middle. Okay, so I, I like to keep track of the one I started with because I'm going to follow the same pattern around the drum as I do this. So I start here, I'm going to do a full turn just to get everything set. Go around my pattern like I've, dis like I've discussed previously so that the head goes on nice and even. And 
there we go. So that's my first little turn around. Everything should be feeling even. Now I'm going to do that a few more times because I know I want my snare to be, you know, relatively tight, kind of normal snare tightness. And one thing you might encounter earlier in your tuning process here, as I just do the first few turns, you might find, which I'm not finding now, that there's wrinkles on one area of the drum. So if you're tightening your drum up and you'll notice like, let's pretend that between these two lugs, I've got some wrinkles that I can really kind of see. So that might mean that the, the, the head wasn't sitting perfectly level when you put it on. It could, depending on what the drums, it could be a variety of things. It could be that these lugs are actually much looser than you thought they were. And to correct for that, I'll usually kind of try and smooth it out and then just tighten those lugs, right? So I might give an extra turn or two here until those wrinkles go away. And in a sense, it seems like, oh, but, but aren't these getting much tighter than the other ones? But the problem is that something was wrong. So they weren't tight enough to make it even. So you just want to get those wrinkles out. The wrinkles are a good sign. So once you get the wrinkles out, then you actually probably are sitting closer to an even kind of situation. So I just turned this a few times, and it's starting to sound like. It's starting to sound like a drum. It actually sounds pretty good already. Um, but I'm, gonna, I'm just going to make it a little bit tighter, because I'm going for a little bit more of a cracky sound, get a little more tone out of the drum, too. Um, and let's say that right here is about where I'm happy with it. Sounds like a snare drum. Sounds like a good snare drum. So that's my sort of rough, like it feels good, I'm getting some good bounce out of the drum. It's about the tone that I would want it to be. The next thing you can do, and you see this happening a lot, people tuning drums, is going between the lugs, right? And hitting between, just right about an inch away from the edge, softly, um, and comparing the, the, the pitch of the drums as you go across. So if I do this here. So they're, all, they're sounding pretty good, but this one here you can hear is a little higher, right? So we've got normal, normal, high. You see a little higher note there, so I'll just take this, bring it down a little bit, and try to get it closer to the pitch. But the interesting thing, so it's sort of a, it's an ever-changing game, because if I, if I loosen this lug right here, it's not only going to affect just that lug, it'll affect the overall pitch of the drum a little bit, it'll affect the ones just next to it a little bit. So it's this sort of, uh, you know, morphing goal, where you're, you're, you have to keep changing. When you change one thing, some other things change. So don't get frustrated. Try to be patient with this, um, because the more you do it, the better you'll get at it. And you kind of do this around the drum and, and so forth. This drum's actually sounding pretty even um, right off the bat. And it's sounding good when I hit it. So as far as I'm concerned, I'm quite happy with the snare. And after a few days, right, you've got a fresh head. That head will stretch out a little more. The pitch might start to sink. You might start to you know, need to tend to your drum a little more than usual in the first few days after you change it, but that's normal. All right, so one last thing about the snare drum before we move on to the toms is just in a, a way to start experimenting with the sound. So I've heard this from a few people. I've heard this from some friends in New York. I've heard this from Benny Greb, who, who made a video recently about this idea. Um, and people have slightly different ways of doing it, but the idea is basically the same. It's that the one or two or three lugs closest to you once your drum's all set, you can detune them, make them much lower, and it'll affect the sound in a way that really might be quite cool. Because unlike your toms, your snare drum, if, since, it's not a, since it's not a pitched thing, like a doom that you really like want a pure tone on, right? It's this sort of like kind of cracked sound, and that's good. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect, right? Not every lug needs to match in pitch. So if I just take these two lugs closest to me and detune them quite a bit, well, first, actually, here's what the drum sounds like now. Now, if I keep detuning these, you'll hear each step I go. It starts to get lower in pitch 
and also just sort of like this fat, nasty sound, right? The, there's no ring, there's not much of anything. I did these three lugs quite a bit here. Right, so if you're playing some kind of, of, of groove that you want that low, fat snare, it might not be that everything needs to be loose, actually, because when these uh, upper lugs here are tighter, you still get some rebound, right? You still get a lot of that feel of a regular drum, but when you detune these quite a bit, it brings a pitch down quite a bit, which can be really nice. So again, here's what that sounds like. I tune that back up a little bit. Here's kind of halfway between the two. And if I bring it back to roughly where we started, then we get back to that good sort of like even crack that we started with. Sounds like a snare drum. All right, so that's the snare drum. Let's think about tom, our, our rack tom here. And toms, they all work in the same general way. So what I'm not going to do is show you the bottom head just for time's sake because it's basically the same process. So if I were going to do the bottom head, I'd take it off the stand, I'd flip it over. What I like to do is actually set it on a throne and then either stand next to it or get another seat next to it so I can spin it around and, and be comfortable. Um, so I get the bottom head kind of somewhere that feels good. You kind of have to experiment a little bit. And then flip that over and do the same thing for the top. So again, these are finger tight here. They're about as tight as I can get them without a key. And then in the same way, we'll do this star shape, right? So I'll start here. I always start in the same place. You do two turns just to get it set on there. Follow my star pattern. Remember what I said about the wrinkles. That'll happen more likely actually on a tom. Just did a couple turns, see what it sounds like. Pretty growly, pretty low still. Give it a couple more turns. And I'm sort of approximating. And sometimes you'll, you'll start to develop a bit of a feel for this. But sometimes if one of the lugs just feels too loose, like you think you turned it the same as the other ones, but it's feeling really loose, I'll give it a little more juice. Like this one up here. OK, I think it needed that. That's what it felt like. Maybe I'm wrong. I'll fix it in the end. But maybe I'm right. Sounds like a tom. It's starting to sound pretty good. And you could go a little higher and just, you might, if you're trying to experiment and get better with tuning, you might want to go past the point actually where you think it sounds good. That might end up being perfect because I like how it shortens the decay a little bit. But if I go past that a little bit, then I end up with, you know, the pitch keeps rising. Right? And in this case, I start to hear some dissonance between, because I've made the top head much tighter than the bottom head. So I'm hearing this sort of, they're kind of fighting each other with different frequencies of vibration. So when you listen to that again, it's a little high for me and it's a little dissonant for me. So I'm going to just peel back off of that a little bit. And I end up with a pretty pure sounding drum tone. And then, like I said, like we did with the snare drum, you go around to the different lugs and try to match the pitch. And what I didn't mention before is sometimes it's helpful to put a finger gently, not pressing, but just touching the center of the drum. Because then you hear a higher overtone. And it's just easier to hear a note up here, do, 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 than a boom, boom, boom. It's harder to compare the notes there, so that's why it's a little helpful. Okay, so you hear some differences there. I like to make a rough adjustment first. Yeah. Let's we'll say it's close enough for now. Sounds like a tom. So, same process with the floor tom. I like to have my floor tom super low and punchy, which can be a really tough sound to get. It helps to have coated heads like I have on this one. Um, but yeah, again, we're finger tight here, and all I'm going to do I'm going to give it like a half turn. I'm going to do almost nothing past um, finger tight and just see how that sounds. And I want this to be as punchy and low as possible. So, so that's where we start. 
So that has a little bit of a growl. That's the thing that's difficult with, with big floor toms is to find a place between. You get like a growl when it's like too loose, it's flappy. And what, in my opinion, is just more high than I want it to sound or too sustainy where you get like a doom and it just never stops. So this is a little growly. I might actually use it like this on a gig because it might come through the mic like just really fat. But let me give this a little more tightness and see if we can just get a bit more of a pure sound, get that growl out of there. So you hear a little bit of the... You hear a little bit of that growl right in the beginning, wow, right? we don't really like that. A little more, you might find some lugs give you more resistance uh, than others, and that might mean that it's, some lugs are a little looser than others, so you can catch those up if you need to. All right, so there you start to hear the drum really sing. You start to hear like a real tone come out of there that it's pure. Now I'm going to back it off, loosen it just a teeny bit, and find the point where I'm just above getting that growl. So roughly around there is when I'm going to want it. Um, and that's more or less, you know, you'll keep experimenting, keep playing, you know, keep make, you know, like I said here, we do this. Um, same thing we did here, trying to make the lugs the same pitch. Um, and you'll start to hone in on a sound that you really like. Now, it took me a long time in my drumming career to realize that the real trick with tuning, actually, is to be willing to experiment, right? So I knew this much. Right? At some point, I was shown how to tune drums. And I would do it, and I'd be like, I just, you know, I, it wouldn't sound like I want it. And I'd be sitting here like, turning it this tiny amount and being like, I don't, you know, I'm not finding the perfect pitch. And at some point, years ago, I realized that what I need to do to understand how drums work is make drastic changes, right? So I'm in the practice room, and I put new heads on, and I think I've done it right, but it's not sounding how I want it to. So instead of doing like teeny little adjustments, what I'll do, I'll flip it over, do like a big crank, right? A full turn, a half turn, something that'll really affect it a lot. Flip it over, what does it sound like now? That's how you'll start to really know how what you do affects the sound, right? So if I crank the bottom of this drum, it's going to have a certain effect. If I really crank the top of the drum, then it's going to have a certain effect. And like I said about the kick drum, those heads interact in a certain way, right? So if you tune the top one a little higher than the bottom one, you get this pitch bend, kind of like a bow kind of thing. Um, you could have a really pure tone, you could have it really dead. Um, and the best way to learn about your own specific drum set and the sound that you want to get is to do quite a bit of more drastic experiments. So big changes, see how it sounds, and then that might help you get closer, um, and then you can work on the fine tuning. But it'll also help you identify what the problem is, right? So if you loosen the bottom heads a bunch and you're like, oh, that was actually the problem, then you start to sort of subconsciously say, okay, I know what that sound sounds like. That sound is the sound of a floor tom with too tight of a bottom head, or whatever it might be. So experimentation is key. Take your time. Don't get frustrated. Um, and the drums are going to, you know, they change and they settle, and you might have to keep tuning things up. And try to learn to love it, because it's, it's a part of your, your life now. <laughs> and the more you can just appreciate doing it, the more you'll, the more you'll enjoy experimenting and the better you'll get at it. So we've got a kit that sounds pretty darn good here. Um, again, this is the PDP concept classic with wood hoops. And here's what it sounds like now. Sounds like a darn good sounding drum set. Um, and that's it from me. So, from all of us here at DW and PDP. Thanks for watching. See you soon.